Alrighty, it's Tuesday, January 31st, the last day of the month of January, and it is just about 7 o'clock in the morning, and I haven't slept all night long. Yay, another all-nighter. Well, not really an all-nighter, <laughs> but still uh, a 12 hour plus day. Uh, it appears to be that uh, I'm now uh, writing and studying late nights rather than being during the day. That happens every once in a while. My time seems to sort of flip around and rather than being one set time, it, 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 it's either you know, late night like this or early in the morning. You know, it, it's, it's hard to kind of explain uh, what my sleep schedule is like because it, 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 it's never the same from week to week. Um, but uh, I did uh, check my what my uh, my YouTube channel. I got several. I got three new subscribers today, so I've got uh, uh, the say uh, the say thank you for all those the new three uh, who the the three new subscribers. Thank you. Um, uh, I might be working in in more of a collaboration with uh, right and proper ladies. Uh, they seem to have a really fun channel, and I got an email from uh, Ellie, or actually a comment from Helicopter, and I'm looking forward to doing the uh, the courtesy videos for uh, Right and Proper Ladies on for Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we'll see what I can come up with, and uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I worked on uh, if for those of you who follow Twitter and follow my Facebook account. Uh, you can see some of the work I've done today. I did. Uh, I was working primarily on the uh, cyborgs and cybernetics uh, website. Uh, not not some website. The uh, web show. And uh, I found a lot of really interesting sites there to see what's going on in terms of the uh, Android development. They've got a lot of really promising stuff out there, but the the, the the, the physical stuff is coming along, uh, facial recognition is coming along, um, they're working on uh, the tactile sentences, but the, what happens is that the robots really don't behave independently, and so there's still a significant way to go in terms of getting that uh, sort of um, I guess, excuse me, is it, it what you would call a, a semi-sentient or fully sentient uh, being? But here's one of the problems that I'm, po that I, that I've sort of thought about and, you know, and it's one of the reasons why uh, Cyborg Alpha is the way it is, or the way she is. Uh, if you expect robots eventually to become sentient being self-learning and self-aware, then one has to come up to, comes to the, the equation that why would a, a, a anything that is sentient and self-aware be servile to someone, to anybody? You know, because being sentient, being even semi-sentient means being independent. And how can you be independent and, and aware when you're a servant to somebody? So this sort of uh, begs the question is whether or not the path we're going down in terms of uh, how to build a, 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 a cyborg or, or a sentient being as a, as a fully independent uh, uh, android. Uh, the question is, if we continue down the path uh, that we're expecting these robots to be our servants, then we can expect at some point in time, because of the way we abuse and treat servants, that these robots will at some point in time get up and attack us because we are the ones who taught it the violence. So, and then this is sort of truth for anything. You put anyone or even any animal in a violent situation, and then it will learn to become a violent, even though. 
it doesn't initially start off that way. It will become that way if it's in the environment where uh, of violence exists. So this can be assumed to be the same for uh, any learning uh, entity, any, any thing that learns, including self-learning robots. Put a self-learning robot into a military or a violent situation, and then it will learn to become violent, even to the point where it can turn against what it considers to be its masters, or in many cases because of the way ma the masters behave, its abuser. So this is sort of the, some of the concerns when you're dealing with robotics that uh, that you have to be aware of. But most of the community at this particular point in time really isn't sort of thinking about this. They have the general idea that robots, uh, as a rule, should not get up and turn against its masters and say, "Well, I can simply put a command in there that that that, that gives it the, the, the sort of directive that." Uh, if it turns against this matter, you know, it, it can't do that because I've put this particular line of code in there. But the problem is, is if the robot really does become truly sentient, truly self-aware, then this line of code will have absolutely mo no meaning whatsoever to the robot. Anyway, it's sort of a thought I was sort of looking at, you know, some of the stuff that's sort of been going on in the news with the whole thing with SOPA, the Protect IP, the direction that sort of the government's actually going in is really, really troubling because it opens the door to so much violence. And if this is what's going on in terms of how they're developing military hardware, one can imagine a military system that once it's initiated, turns around and becomes destructive to the people who created it. So imagine this, that the American army, or these so-called the, the armies of the free, build this ideal weapon. And then they, when they finally release the weapon, the weapon does not behave as it is, is told to behave, but turns around and attacks the owner, or the creator. This is sort of the situation that the United States and a lot of these other free com countries these so-called free countries are going down because they're creating self-aware robots in a fundamental vi uh, environment of violence. So the future of robotics really from where it's standing today does not look good because it's heading down the path of self-destruction. So this is sort of uh, you know a whole thing that you know that, that, that can be seen and can is playing out in in the sort of the uh, even the blogosphere the blogosphere and on YouTube if you go and look at all the different uh, the uh, atheists out there who uh, stand up and make these these comments that uh, basically sort of champion their own intelligence while belittling uh, the Christians for their beliefs, uh, or, any, or, or any religious religion. But the thing is, is that the atheists have absolutely no proof of what they're saying. So they, they become, even though they say they're not a religion, they're superior to religion, they in fact themselves have become a religion. So, we have sort of an environment that's, that, that's sort of um, becoming less and less stable. And the question is, if these people, and they have to a certain degree, have achieved a certain amount of power politically, then you can see the battle between the right and the left, uh, even in the United States or, or globally, coming to blows, coming to a, a, a situation where uh, you will have some form of violence coming out of it. And the, the, the irony is that both the right and the left, and this is particularly, I'm talking about the European right now, uh, which are the European Christians, who have this idea that if they hasten the end of the world, that means that they bring it forward fast enough, that they will somehow gain favor with God 
and be given uh, primary positions as, as prime ministers or, you know, uh, you know, that they will be the ones who God as the king will rule champion. I mean, and so, so what happens, they're pushing for war. And then they, on the left, you have the socialists and the atheists who also believe that the only way to truly purge the world of this, you know, this religious menace that they consider to be out there is to create this this violent revolution. This is sort of the, the, that Mark, that the, the Karl Marx predicted that said that, that in order for a truly communist society, a truly homogeneous society, to form in socialism, that you need to have this massive bloodletting. I mean, so both sides say. They want to destroy each other. They want this big, you know, and both sides are gaining more and more popularity, more and more power throughout the world. And there really doesn't seem to be any degree of reason on either side that seems to be pulling them away from the conclusion war is the answer. So, well, it does seem disheartening. I'm still of the mind that if you look at people like Winston Churchill, who was at the time one of the lone people who believed that the Nazis should be stopped, and did what he could sadly in the background until his day came as Prime Minister, where he had to sort of face down the uh, the Nazi uh, 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 war machine, uh, he was able to succeed. Where where, where everyone th the, you know everyone around him, all the people in power around him, up until the point in the day when he that he became prime minister, was saying that 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 England should have sur surrendered and appeased to the Nazis. They shouldn't have gone to war against the Nazis. So you know, hope can lie in one individual. One individual can do an enormous amount to avoid uh, global catastrophes. So it's not uh, a foregone conclusion that we will end up in that path, but, you know, um, it, is, it, is, it is a path that we are going down right now, but it's something that I believe that we can sort of pull, be, be pulled away from. So my views are not fully pessimistic and they have some degree of hope that, you know, we can pull the, way, the world away from uh, its own sense of self-destruction. Alright, anyways, that's the way, that's where it's going to end up for, end up for today and for tomorrow. Uh, it will be another day of, uh, of reading, writing, and sort of trying to push things forward. I didn't get to the uh, comments that I wanted to get to today, but uh, I'll try to do that tomorrow. Anyways, I'll see you in a few hours.